Hi. Me again. Um, I have spoken a lot on my channel about the birth trauma that I experienced with Eloise and how difficult that was. And I've briefly touched on the birth I had with Rufus um, and how different it was. Um, but Rufus, unbelievably, is going to be turning five on Thursday, the 1st of February. He is going to be five years old. I can't. Oh, I keep thinking about it and freaking out because how can my little baby be five? Um, so I thought I would take an opportunity to reflect on the birth I had with him and those first couple of years I had with him before Eloise came along. When I found out I was pregnant, we were not trying, we were not planning it, we had literally just got engaged. And so while it's quite nice to know that we were sort of committed in the sense that we'd committed to you know, be engaged and get married. We weren't yet married and we were not really in a stable position to have a child. We were living in a one bedroom flat, which I owned for, you know, uh, for a more complicated story. I own, managed to own a flat at that age and we were living there. It was very small. It was really cute for two people, but even we were starting to feel the walls closing in. And um, we had we both had jobs with you know monthly salaries, but they weren't decent salaries. In fact, at that time, I was actually earning more than Nick. I mean, there's no way I would ever earn more than him now because he is just so dedicated and works so hard and has really put his all into his career, and and it's been fantastic for him. But uh, at the time, he was very much starting out still in his career and he um, wasn't earning much. And so we were suddenly like, now my salary is going to disappear because even with maternity leave, you don't get your full salary. Um, I can't even remember how it breaks down now, but at most you get sort of six months of salary and then you're on statutory maternity pay, which is not much at all. <laughs> so we were overwhelmed and I took the test took the pregnancy test I was four days late on my period and my period at that point was pretty regular you could time it quite easily to the day so I was four days late like, uh -oh. didn't really think that it would be pregnant I thought maybe my hormones were just out of whack or something like that it'd been a bit of a stressful month one way or another so I thought maybe that was putting it off so anyway I got one to get a pregnancy test. Now I was so confident that it wasn't going to be positive that I took this pregnancy test in the toilet at work just to kind of put my mind at ease and stop me thinking about it. So it was positive <laughs> and that did not put my mind at ease and it did not stop me thinking about it and I immediately rang Nick and I'm standing in the lobby. I mean I worked in an office building that was quite nice and so it had this massive lobby downstairs and so I went down there and there were like sort of tables and chairs in the lobby and I just wept on the phone and I remember apologizing and being I'm so sorry that I've let this happen as if it was my responsibility and it was two people required to make a baby so you know at least two people required to make a baby so it's uh <laughs> so it was definitely it was definitely both our responsibility, but still, you know, I, I did, I apologised and I was just, I couldn't get my head around it at all. And Nick was amazing. He, as soon as I said the words, he went, okay. And then sort of, I was like, all right, we're still going to do this. And he kind of knew that while I'm extremely pro-choice and I think every woman should decide for themselves what they want to do if they get pregnant and... and you know, they have to make the decision based on their own situation, their own lives and what have you. I, I just kind of felt that given the fact that I was in a loving relationship, we had always said that if we fell pregnant, we would we would make it work. Um, so he kind of knew straight away that that was what was going to be happening. We were going to be uh, going forward with it. 
and he was so calm and so cool and I'm sure inside he wasn't but with me he was and he was just what I needed in that moment he taught me around bear in mind this is all happening in my lunch break <laughs> so the clock is ticking down before I need to get back to my desk and then um I called my mum and she was at work as well and I told her and she when uh <laughs> when I first told her she was in a she's a teacher she was in the staff room she had to kind of go, all right, one sec, hang up, go into her office and call me back and be like, oh my God. Um, but I mean, very quickly she went from being shocked and overwhelmed to actually being really excited. Um, so actually they were really helpful. So he was very calm and just, you know, matter of fact, like, okay, so we're going to be parents. And my mom was just thrilled. And so it was, it was actually really nice to have those responses. Um, and Nick and I were going out to meet friends that night, and our friends know this now, but obviously we just found out we were pregnant, and we weren't in a position to tell anyone, really, and so we had to sit there at our friend's house, and they're just, like, telling us about, you know, what it's been, they, they got married, the, I think they got married that previous year, and so they were kind of telling us about, like, what it was like being married together, and, and they were finally living together, they got, didn't start living together until after they got married, so they were telling us about that been like and you know, sort of Nick and I just sitting there going, mm, that's that's great, that's nice. <laughs> so funny. Um but yeah, and and from then on we did, we just made it work. We figured out how to do it and Nick busted his ass and got himself a job that was better paid. It was in the same organization, but you know, he he really worked for that and he um oh he was amazing. And my work were great, they were really supportive. Um and then the birth came. And I never really thought about the birth. I didn't do any sort of, I did one prenatal class or antenatal class, whatever they call it. I did one and I thought it was rubbish. <laughs> I was like, this isn't helpful. So I was like, I'll be fine. Uh, like, Women did this for years without having any classes. I think I can manage. Um, kind of took that approach to it. Um, anyway, Rufus was due on, I think it was the 17th of February he was due on the 30th. Oh, sorry, the 17th of January. On the 31st of January, we still didn't have a baby. <laughs> Two weeks late, little bugger. So they had booked me in for an induction to happen on the 31st. And that morning, I woke up at 5 o'clock in the morning, 5.30 in the morning, actually, and desperately needed a wee, which is no surprise, because when you're nine months pregnant, if you go an hour without needing a wee, it's a miracle. So I took myself off to the bathroom and on the way there, thought I'd wet myself. I hadn't wet myself. My waters are broken. 5.30 in the morning, on the 31st of January. It was so exciting. And I ran back into the bedroom and I was like, Nick, it started, my waters have gone. And, and it, I'm so sick of hearing that it's a trickle. Oh, that's like not true. It feels like a dam has gone. It. I mean, it, I know everybody's different. So for, maybe for some people it is a trickle, and that that's lovely. It wasn't for me. It was like whoosh, and then continued that way until he was born. It doesn't stop. It just keeps coming. I don't understand how much water they really need to be in, but it was. It seemed like a lot. Um. So anyway, we called a cab, because Nick doesn't drive, so we called a cab, took us to the hospital. You know, like, cab companies don't usually take you if you're in labour, because of lots of different reasons. Um, so we didn't tell him beforehand, but he was taking a pregnant woman to the hospital in the middle of the night. I think he figured it out, and he did. I mean, you know, he let us in, he was like, good luck. <laughs> so, um, but it was great, and we got into the hospital, and now I actually wasn't very dilated, so they wouldn't let me into the birthing centre at the time. Um, so they said, look, you know, go off, walk around the hospital, go to the restaurant, get some breakfast, whatever. So we did that. We went to the canteen. Nick got some breakfast. I couldn't bear the thought of eating. And then while he was eating his dinner, so his breakfast, I grabbed a brown paper bag and I vomited like I've never vomited before. I realise this might be TMI, but it's a birth story. The whole thing's going to be TMI. And uh, I vomited Oh, it was awful. And we were in a canteen and all these other people were eating their breakfast. And it wasn't like a quiet vomit. Like, there was no sort of like, 
And you're just, oh, it's fine. And it was, Whoa. anyway, <laughs> that joy happened. And I'm not someone who vomits often. That's not a thing that I do. Um, so it's really unpleasant. Um, so yeah, as you can imagine, the contractions were coming at that point, And that's what caused the vomit, the pain. And we carried on walking around the hospital a bit. And every so often we'd go back and see if I was any further along in dilation. It wasn't really. I it turns out I'm a really slow dilator. It's just something about me. It's a really great feature of my being. Um, so I then, uh, oh God, I the trail of amniotic fluid I must have left around that hospital. I kept thinking I really should just get someone with a mop to follow me. Um, it was oh, it was horrendous, but it was so exciting too. And incredibly painful. And anyone who tells you that contractions aren't painful is lying. I'm sorry, they are really painful. Even in the early stages. They're not as intense. They they do get more painful, that's that's for sure. So if we're like doing it on a scale, then yes, they are less painful at the beginning, but they're still painful. You still want to cry, you still have to stop moving during the contraction and you can't talk. And you just have to breathe. And so that whole thing where they train you to breathe, nah, -uh, you don't need training. That is the only thing you can do. If you've ever stubbed your toe and you go that, you know, like in the family guy thing, whenever they bang their knee and there's someone always rolling around the ground going, <sighs> gripping their knee. It's like that. You can't help it. It's just your body's natural reaction to pain. I don't need a lesson. Anyway, um... Eventually, we got admitted into the birthing centre. Now, there wasn't a room available. It turned out a lot of people gave birth that day. Um, so we weren't allowed in to an actual private room at that point. So I was just sort of in... They have, like, a little communal area with, like, seats and a TV and refreshments of one kind or another. Not that I was eating or managing to drink at this point. And they sat me on a birthing ball, which is, like, one of those yoga balls. And they... <laughs> They gave me something to vomit in because it, it already happened like three times by that point. And I just sat there and I just had to concentrate. It was so painful. It was so painful. And I was just like, really? And it's just been hours. I mean, by this point, we're talking it's the afternoon. So my water's broke at 5.30 a.m. We are now in the p.m.s and I still am not giving birth and I'm not even in a birthing suite with a bed or you know, bath or anything like that. I am just sitting in a corridor, essentially. Well, eventually, they, um, my hero, my absolute hero, midwife came round and she took my hand and she was like, how would it be to sit in a hot bath? Would you like to go and sit in a hot bath? And I, I, you know, I've talked about being slightly bisexual before. I think this was the one moment where I have felt like I actually wanted to snog a woman. Like I just wanted to grab her face and just, oh, oh I loved her in that moment. I loved her in that moment. And Nick, I could care less about. <laughs> it was just like, yes, I want to get in a hot bath. So we did, we, I got into this suite. It was called the Bluebell Room. The walls were blue. And I, they ran a bath for me. I got in a bath and I, oh, Seriously, if you can have a water birth, if you're able to do that, do it. It is the nature's pain relief. I don't know why, but it's amazing. And then actually at that point, they were also able to give me gas and air as well. Oh, oh gas and air. Nick kept trying to get a puff. I was like, no. When you push a baby out of your hoo-ha, you can have one. But for now, I'll stick with it. Thank you very much. But the, I mean, gas and air, when you first do it the first few times, it can make you really nauseous. Um, and it did. Well, I was already vomiting, so it was inevitable that I was going to vomit again. So I did. But then I carried on having the gas and air, and it was just such a relief every time. And I was able to talk a bit more now, a bit more relaxed. Nick was just watching TV because in the birthing centres they have TVs in the room so he was just watching some documentary on TV because again we're now into the evening <laughs> we're now beyond 12 hours later after my waters broke and there's still no movement I think at this point if memory serves I was about 6 centimetres so I still have 4 to go and it had taken that long to do 6 so I wasn't really expecting much um the thing is, after a while, they start to worry about infection and things like that after your waters have gone. So then it became, are we going to move you to the labour ward? Are they potentially going to go in and, and, and 
baby out or are we going to stick out here? Now, thank God there was no room on the labour ward. They were full. So they were like, well, at least you've got a bed here. Otherwise, you could just be in a corridor giving birth. We're going to keep you here. So I got to stay. Um, but that subject came up a few times throughout the night. Yes, it went all night long. And it kept being brought up that maybe I should go to the labour ward. Um, and Nick really, really fought for me to stay in the birth centre. Because there was no real reason to move me to the labour ward. There was no sign of infection. Everything seemed fine. Um, we were still within the 24 hour marker. So, you know, so let's just see what happens. So, uh, by this point I'd gotten out of the bath and I was on the bed. You know, massive, the beds and birthing centres like proper double. I mean, possibly king. I mean, it felt huge to me at that point. And I was still breathing, using the gas and air. Gas and air is amazing still. The pain is really ramping up though. Those contractions do not get easier. And you're so tired by that point as well. And so they gave me pethidin to help you relax in between contractions. So you're not just wired the whole time. So you have your contraction, which really, really hurts. And then you can kind of doze in between the contractions. And then you have another one, you take gas and air. And then you do the pethidin just helps you, or at least it just helped me calm down between the contractions and it was amazing I loved it um and it meant that I was able to get just a tiny bit of rest now at about 3 30 in the morning I started to feel the need to push yes and Colleen Colleen my wonderful beautiful midwife who was just the most laid back midwife she was like okay Okay, we're going to try and push. We're going to try and push. And I'm like, okay. She's like, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. But she was great. And I started pushing. Again, not like the films. I didn't push once and sneeze and the baby popped out. At 4.30am, I'm still pushing. Oh my goodness. And I remember saying to her, and by this point he was crowning. He was right there, you know. And I said to him, I said to the midwife, is he going to be Okay. You know, is this going to be okay? And she said, yeah, yeah, it's going to be absolutely fine. Yeah, just just one more big push for me. And I think he's going to be out. And I have never pushed so hard in my life. And this is my one bit of advice to everybody in labour. If you can, and this is a big if, but if you can, don't make a, don't make a sound when you push. Keep it in. Use all the energy that would be in your face and push it down. And push, push, push. Do not scream. If you scream, you're wasting your energy. Now that is a really big if because, oh my God, it hurts so much. And all you'll want to do is scream. And there is a moment, I didn't have it with Eloise, but I had it with Rufus, probably because of the amount of time it was taking to push. There is a moment that I call the ring of fire. And if I heard a woman in labour scream, I would recognise the ring of fire scream. It's when it's like sort of, you're just kind of stretch the capacity, the, the head is coming out and it is, oh, ouch, ring of fire. But then he was out and he was perfect and he was beautiful and they put him on my chest and it just felt perfect. He was perfect and beautiful and wonderful and I loved him and it's so strange because you've carried this baby around for nine months and then suddenly they're put in front of you and you do you love them so much and yet they are a complete stranger and you know nothing about them and they're going to test you and try you and it is going to be a huge learning curve but in that moment oh And of course, every birth is different and not everyone is going to get that moment. But in that moment for me, oh, I loved him so much. Oh, it was just wonderful. And I just, and they kept trying to, because they try and check that you're with it and that you're coherent. And they kept trying to ask me like, what did you have? What do you have? And I just went, my baby. And they're like, yeah, but it's a boy or a girl. I'm like, it's a boy. I know it's going to be a boy. I couldn't understand why they kept asking me if it was a boy. I was like, yes, I know he's going to be a boy. And there's his willy. It's fine. Oh, he was just, oh, he was just so beautiful. He he was so beautiful. He is so beautiful. He still is. Five years later, he is still one of the most wonderful things in the world. 
oh I love that boy it's just so wonderful and the next well the rest of that day I got to go home that day we got home I think around midday one o'clock and parents were with us helped oh it was just wonderful it was so wonderful it was so magical and special and intimate and and the next week was beautiful so many he was the cuddliest baby he loved nothing more than to put his head on your shoulder and if you handed him to someone that he'd never met before he would still cuddle in and put his head on their shoulder he was oh this angel child that's not to say we didn't have really difficult nights where he wouldn't sleep or really difficult days where he was crying non-stop of course we did he was a baby he was my baby and he was my angel and i loved him and i love him more and more every day and he's so excited about his fifth birthday he's so excited to be five and he has this idea in his head that when he's five he's going to basically be a grown-up but that's that's basically it Oh, I just, I love him so much. And I can't wait to pick him up from school today and give him a big squeeze. And I can't wait for his birthday on Thursday and just shower him with cake and presents. Not that we've gone mad, but you know, I've gotten a few things that I know he'll love. And that's always nice. And he's going to have a birthday party on Saturday with so many friends, so many wonderful people that he loves and who love him. And that's wonderful. And that's not even including the family that we will see at some point over the weekend, hopefully, as well. I just... Oh, he's a wonderful boy. And I'm a very lucky woman. I'm a very lucky mummy to have such a wonderful boy. And so I just wanted to tell the story of a birth that wasn't traumatic, that whilst it was incredibly painful, it ended wonderfully and all I have is beautiful, calm and peaceful memories of it. It is possible to have a wonderful birth experience, it really is. And I really hope that anyone who does give birth can achieve that. And for those that don't, don't give up. Don't try not to be too disappointed. And try to just enjoy what you have if you can. And get the help that you need when you can. This is a much longer video than I intended. I do apologise. But there's just so much to say about something that was so wonderful. All right, I'm gonna go now because I really need to wake up the younger baby when he's upstairs, exhausted. <laughs> we attempted potty training this weekend and it did not go well and she is not happy with me. Um, and I will see you all again soon.